Good morning, my name is Annabelle, and my session number is 03-0013-0026. And today I will be presenting a character study of the protagonist from two works, The Metamorphosis and The Green Mile. We'll begin with The Green Mile, which is a serial novel written by Stephen King in 1996. Okay. So the protagonist here is John Coffey. Like to drink, only not spell the same. <laughs> but he, um, the people mostly call him by his nickname, Big Boy. And he's named that way because of his appearance. He's six foot eight, ranging from 280 to 350 pounds. And he is broad in the shoulders and deep through the chest. And he has muscles all over, as well as scars, which Melinda pointed out. And um, even though he might look scary, he might possibly also be an angel because he has the power to do miracles, uh, the miracle of healing and taking the pain away. And also because in um, part six, chapter seven, Brutal actually described him as a gift of God. Now his health fluctuates and depends on whether he's using his power or not and whether he's using his power correctly or not. Now we know the correct way was in the, in the first two miracles because um, Paul described it that after he did the miracle, he made this choking sound, almost as if a man was choking on a chicken bone. And after that, Paul also added that he exhaled this cloud of black insects. And after that, he felt better. And then when he was here in Melinda, he did not exhale the insects, and so his health declined. And Paul described him this time as, um, as gray as it looked as he'd been rolling around in flour, and he also cow coughed constantly. And he looked like he seemed to age pretty much. He looked the same as Melinda when she had that brain tumor. All right, so Paul is one of um, John's alleys along with Della Cross, Mr. Jingles, Janice, Dean, Harry, and Brutus. And his, fo his foes are Percy, Wild Billy, the Dirt family, and the townspeople. And that is because Paul, John is convicted of a rape murder of two little young Dirt white girls. Um, and even though he did not commit the crime, he doesn't defend himself. He doesn't say that he didn't commit the crime. And also, whenever Paul is reading the files, he never reads that that um, John said that he did not commit the crime. So it might be that his personality is that he is really spacey. He really isn't in the moment. He might have probably not even know what's going on. And we know this because before the first miracle, Paul said that for the first time since John arrived to Eblock, he was really there, he was really with us. So it, it seems that he, the only thing that he knows is how to cure people and heal others, and his name, of course. Um, his weakness is darkness. Oh wait, along with, his per with that, his personality is reserved, and he fears dark, he feels the dark, and he sheds tears a lot. And now his weakness is darkness, both kinds of darkness, the darkness where you can't see, and also the darkness where People are being ugly to each other, and his weakness ultimately leads him to his fate, which is that he chooses to die. And we see here in the first quote and the third quote that he really is tired of living and the darkness, and ultimately he ends up dying to um, tied to Old Sparky. Now, when I think of John, I think of three symbols or maybe references or inspirations even to his character, and one of them is pinpointed by um, Stephen King himself, which is St. Christopher. Um, when John cured um, Melinda, Melinda gave him this necklace, possibly this necklace, the necklace of St. Christopher, and the story of St. Christopher is that one day a young boy went up to Christopher and asked him if he could carry him across the river, and whenever St. Christopher put him on his shoulder, he realized that the boy was really, really heavy, and that child was Jesus Christ, and um, Jesus was believed to be carrying the weight of the world. So I think that this reference was made because now John is carrying the weight of that tumor which he will later use for justice for what he considers two very bad men. There's also the weeping relics I've mentioned before that John Coffey often sheds a lot of tears even though we never really see him cry except for in the beginning whenever he couldn't cure the Diderot girls, he was very remorseful. But we don't see him cry after that, we just see him um, shedding a lot of tears. And he might be a living relic or a living statue because also living statues have the power of healing, just like he does. Lastly is Jesus Christ. Him and John Coffey have the same initials, which is already a given. 
and they were both executed because of the hate of the people. Um, and we know that a lot of people hated um, John Coffey because as soon as he stepped into Old Sparky's room, the first thing he said was, there's a lot of folks here who hate me a lot. And so he did have people who did not hate him. Um, he had the guards on um, E-Block, just like Jesus had the apostles. But they did both choose to die in the end. Um, the biggest difference between Jesus and John Coffey is that Jesus died to save the world, and John Coffey died for trying to save a couple of people. Now let's move on to Frames Kafka's Metamorphosis, which was first published in 1915. The protagonist here is Gregor Samson, although by the last two parts he's mostly referred to as he or it by his family because he is a vermin, but although he is an insect or a very bad creature, he's more human and humane than the rest of the characters in the entire novella. As a matter of fact, he doesn't even have any foes, and that's because he lives in isolation in his room by force. And I say by force because if he gets out, and caught chaos will start. Like one time he got out, and then his mother fainted, and then two people moved out the house, and then the sister freaked out, and then the special zombies started throwing apples until he was impaled. Um, his personality is very interesting and easy going because he can accept hardship. Whenever his father lost his job, he went out and got a job. Whenever he woke up one morning magically turned into a vermin, he didn't bemoan the fact and he did not complain or he didn't even look for the cause, which is why we never found out the cause of his transformation. Instead, he took it one day at a time and he kept his mind straight. Um, <coughs> His strength is, was being able to care for his family, but once he turned into a vermin, he really could not do that. And also, his weakness was upsetting his family, and which ultimately led, led him to his fate, because he chose to die to better out the family. Now, many believe that Kafka himself was the inspiration to, to um, Gregor Samsa because one time Kafka had insomnia and his sister had to be his caretaker. And he was, he was afraid that he was um, harming his family and being a burden on his family. Now we can go back on a couple of quotes that we can compare. Here in the first quote, it says, I'm really, t I'm really tired of the pain I hear and feel, boss. I'm tired of being on the road, lonely as a robin in the rain, not ever having nobody to go with or to tell me where we're coming from or going to or why. I'm tired of people being ugly to each other. It feels like pieces of glass in my head. I'm tired of all the, thin of the times I wanted to help and couldn't. I'm tired of being in the dark. Mostly it's the pain. There's too much. If I could end it, I would, but I can't. And what he says is the same, is, can be compared to what um, Gregor is saying. He says that, oh God, what a grueling job I've picked. I've got the torture of traveling, worrying about changing trains, eating miserable food, at all hours, constantly seeing new faces, no relationship that lasts, or get intimate, and or get it all. <coughs> and so um, both can be their conclusion of their of what they shows and they shows the end. Um, Both Gregor and John Coffey were not, they could not control what they were. And for who they were and for what they did and for what they become, they were, they, they died for it. And John was born the way he was and, he, and Gregor was not born the way he was, but he really could not change his transformation. And because of that, they were betrayed. Now we don't really, have a lot of background on John. We don't know if he had a family and he was maybe betrayed by the family, but we do know about Gregor and how he was betrayed by the woman who gave birth to him and by the father who raised him and the father who should have loved him most because whenever the family lost his job, Gregor was the one who went out and he got a job, but it never happened. Now this is the quote that I started with. It's by John Coffey and it is, I'm sorry for what I am. Which is, which is 
reference to both John Coffey and Gregory Samson. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Um, it's a, you provided a good comparison of these two protagonists. Did you, did you realize the similarities between the two of them when you initially read the second work, The Green Mile? Did you immediately start thinking about the connection between Gregor and John? Yes, ma'am. Towards the end, whenever he was being executed, I realized it. And then, did you also make any connections with other works of literature that we've studied in the preceding three years, or other things that you read outside of class? Um, I, I thought of Frankenstein also. Yes. Frankenstein's creature. I agree. I think that... Definitely, Gregor ha is a direct uh, descendant of the creation of Victor Frankenstein. Mm -hmm. And also, Lucifer thrown out of heaven and John Milton's Paradise Lost.